All right. So what I was saying is that the current neocon uh, strategy is laughable uh, for the long-term military success of the United States. It's just pathetic, okay? So people under 50 now have all played war games, They're guys like me. And in war games, as I said previously, during relative peacetime, and fighting these extremists is a joke. It's not a war. War is like uh, Nazi Germany invades France. A war is like uh, Vietnam, except they're coming over here. I mean, even Vietnam was technically a police action. You don't need to, but let's, you know, there's a war. There's a war, and then there's this war on terror, uh, which is... Uh, you know, destroying our economy unnecessarily. It's just a few bands of extremists. Even if they did hit us, the cost of our actions there are costing the equivalent in terms of lost money of a million Americans a year from car accidents and obesity and poverty. All the indicators that we have to combat is we have the, one of the highest poverty rates in the world. We have one of the highest incarceration rates. We have the highest incarceration rate. We have two million people in prison. China's only got a million and a half. India's only got 300,000. Russia's only got a million. We got this obscene tax on our economy from corrections, an obscene tax on our economy uh, from interest only on the $4 trillion uh, that's been spent since 2000, deficit on militarism. Uh, and all, uh, and um, okay, we need to deal with poverty. We have to deal with the fact that China is going to eclipse us in patents. We have to deal with the fact that real military technology development uh, is going to have an edge on countries that have major manufacturing high tech because it's all about miniaturization right now. Moore's Law, which doubles computers every 18 months, has a very highly military application because we have proof of concept now of things like erasing and restoring memories in the case of rats, embedding chips in people's head in the case of stroke victims. This is all on PBS recently. It's for real and it's very interesting. Uh, so the technologies that will happen in the next 10 years are going to way outstrip nuclear as a problem because they'll be able to just wipe anybody out who's trying to do nuclear nanotechnology. Masking events. See, with, with Moore's Law, anything that you can kind of prototype eventually will be commercializable okay because it does you can never uh, base a product design around something that's never been done but once it's been done once Moore's Law is going to allow you to stretch what it can do so um, R&D is very important and manufacturing is very important not just regular manufacturing like our weapons makers here but high-tech manufacturing and in mass and that's because uh, we're going to pay through the teeth if we have a boutique miniaturization industry and China's got a mass scale miniaturization industry. Uh, that's my view. I doubt anybody can disprove it or uh, I think it's probably true. Now, let's get back to summarizing this article. <clears throat> so Romney's not going to restore our constitutionality. There's no uh, sign of that. Uh, he's not going to cut this laughable, pathetic military spending. So what's the laughable, pathetic part about it is that if you go to look at indebtedness of countries in Wikipedia or wherever, uh, just Google it, uh, you'll see the U.S. is number 10 uh, in the world. Only above it is uh, Jamaica and the countries near that are in big trouble, Greece, Ireland, Portugal, uh, even Iceland is going to be in better shape than us. They just had their whole banking sector wiped out according to the projections by 2015. That's the other problem. Our projections are showing that it's going to continue to rise the deficit. Uh, no country is showing the ability to grow to be in the top 10 with the European and American deficits. Europe, Japan, and America will be below number 10 position in the world economies. And the thing we have in common is actually our debt levels as I've mentioned before. So uh, these people are stupid. Um, now, there's one way what they're doing makes sense, which is if they did an immediate attack now. Uh, so we would basically be having to destroy other major economies and cripple them to keep them from growing, which would be not in the interest of anyone except this uh, ruling class. Because if the more business, the more business. If the Mexicans are rich, uh, we can actually make more money. It's just like if you're selling a product. 
you want uh, rich people because then you can charge more for your product um, and uh, you can also get into the market better because the product margins are fatter and people have more money to spend so why would we want to make all these other countries poor only if we ran the whole show and uh, we don't um, these people are not our friends okay uh, R&D patents uh, China is on the right side of that we need to have education we need to eliminate poverty because that drives health care costs I mentioned that he's not going to help us with any of that they're all clamoring for these stupid insane short-term policies it did take me about probably a year to put all this together half time um, but you know they've got millions of people how could they over, uh, overlook this only Ron Paul has been willing to take unpopular stands and it does to some extent remind me a little bit of Winston Churchill they both spent many years in the political wilderness as far as I don't know when it exactly it occurred but Winston Churchill uh, got in a lot of trouble because he had this campaign against Turkey that created a, quite a massacre was quite unsuccessful uh, during the First World War, but his warnings were so detailed and so numerous prior to the Second World War that no one could gainsay him. And he, in this same respect, Ron Paul's room, room, uh, warnings have been numerous and detailed. And Winston Churchill would have never sold out to Hitler. That was clear to everybody because it was in his blood, it was his passion, it was his life. And it's the same with Ron Paul. Ron Paul's economics and liberty. Uh, T orientation libertarian if you will is in his blood he would get much more uh, personal satisfaction seeing these dreams come true than he would being the emperor of the world because he essentially despises the people that have such less for power as debased beings in my view and like Churchill he's being called by us to face down fascism and perhaps like Churchill a new generation will take over once the beast has been vanquished and the job has been done. Churchill didn't survive much longer than the Second World War as a prime minister. And maybe Paul won't either uh, once the beast is slain. In other words, some aspects of the uh, uh, philosophy of a limited government could fall a number of different ways because we do have the technology to eliminate want in the world and uh, right now because of corruption problems we can't do it through the government we need to redo things so that we can avoid corruption and probably do that by keeping things smaller scale at the community level so in this case states rights uh, community rights uh, a lightweight federal government because you can't do different things if your federal government has a one-size-fits-all mark uh, uh, and that's the whole problem you can't have laboratories how would I start uh, you know my own medical research university uh, cooperative in the Bay Area with a, a agriculture a co-op farm all the resources are already spoken for and I don't have the money um, and it's very expensive now to tool up for all of that so at any rate, um, we have this huge. We'd have this huge tax on us. All these rules, uh, all of these uh, uh, taxes we have to pay. Um, uh, so um, we are constrained. It's all regulated and taxed in such a way that it's harder to try new things. Uh, forgive me. I quit smoking recently. That my e-cigarette. So um, I think that's about it. So the summary view is, um, if you're a progressive, Ron Paul is right now, for the next four years, your best friend. Thank you, good luck, and good night.